In Creo Parametric, you can define the CNC toolpaths in order to manufacture your parts. To do that, there is a bunch of setup that you need to do, and one of those steps is to define your cutting tools. In a previous video, I showed how you could configure your different tools. Those are called edited tools, and that's where you define the different values for things like the length of the tool or for the cutter diameter, corner radius, all these different values inside of here, plus some other different parameters like the material for the tool or the number of flutes. A second method of defining your tools is by using an existing solid model. For example, here when I am in the tool setup dialog box, I can go to my file drop down menu and then choose open tool library. And there are a few choices in here. I'll explain these later on, but I will choose by reference. I'm going to grab a part from my tools directory. And so this is an example of a solid tool that has been used and it's brought in the different values for the dimensions of the tool itself. So why would you want to use an existing solid tool? Well, for one reason, it's just better visually. So you can see how the tool is actually going to move when you do material removal later on. And a second reason that you might want to use an actual model is for interference checking so that you'll see how to, how it will look compared to just some edited tool where you've uh, entered in a bunch of different values. But anyhow, let's take a look at what you need to have in one of these solid models in order to use it as a tool for CNC toolpaths. I'm gonna to click the OK button out of the dialog box. Let me go to a window that has that particular assembly. And so the first thing to know about using a solid model for your tools for CNC milling is that this can be either a part or an assembly. You can use either kind of model, but there are a bunch of things that are required to be in here. For one thing, you need to have a coordinate system for the tip. Let me go to my in graphics toolbar. I'm going to turn on my coordinate system display and down here at the bottom, you can see that we have a coordinate system for the tip and it has to have the name tip or if you are using a multi-tip tool, it would be tip followed by a number like tip one, tip two, tip three, tip four, and so on. When you are creating that coordinate system, the Z axis of that coordinate system needs to point into the tool. Sort of like if this tool was coming in vertically, well, it would be that Z axis would be in the same direction as the program zero on your workpiece or in your manufacturing model. Okay, so that's one thing you need to have that coordinate system. Another thing that you need to have are dimensions renamed to the values that are going to be read into the tool setup dialog box. I'm gonna grab this particular part from the assembly and click the open button. And let's go to the very first protrusion. I will click on it in the model tree. Then from the mini toolbar, I will click on the edit dimensions command. And here we see, well, there's one dimension that is in there. I will go to the tools drop down menu, or excuse me, to the tools tab and then switch dimensions. And so here you can see that the dimension has been renamed here to cutter diameter. And so some of the other different dimensions that you might have, and these vary depending on what kind of tool that you're using, are things like length or corner radius. If you are doing hole making, some other dimensions that you need are for tip offset and C-sync angle. So let's take a look at some other things that you need in here. I'm gonna deselect this. Let's go to our parameters from the tools tab. I always get to it from a different location. Okay, here, here's the parameters command. Okay, so here we have cutter radius. It is grayed out in this particular case here. This actually, that's not one of the required ones. Let's see here. Oh, num of teeth. 
Well, this corresponds to the value that you're going to use for the flutes. So that is a required parameter. Here we have tool material. This is going to be a string and this will fill in the value in the dialog box. So you'll notice that right now I'm looking at some of the different dimensions and parameters in a tool model. Also, this coordinate system is defined in this particular part model, but I brought in an assembly. So if you are using an assembly as your solid tool, there is an order in which Creo Parametric will look for the different entities. First, it'll look in the top level assembly, and if it finds any of those different dimensions or parameters or that tip coordinate system at the top level assembly, it's going to use those different items. Then it will look in the components in the order in which they appear in the model tree. It'll look in this case, the holder part next, and it'll search for the coordinate system or the dimensions or the parameters. And if it doesn't find it there, it's going to look in the next part. In this case, it would be the BEM ball and mill one inch part and look for them there. And it's going to stop when it finds the first value. So let's say that you have a tip coordinate system in the top level assembly and then the other two parts. Well, it's going to use the one from the top level assembly. It's not going to use like the last value that it reads in. And if it's missing any of the different required values, then you're going to get an error when you try to use that part in your CNC model. So let me bring open a dialog book, or excuse me, open up a file to show you some of the different values that you might need. So here is my tools folder that I have pointed to by a config.pro option. And so let me go to the tool that I made in the other video. So I made this configured tool and I saved it. I'm gonna right mouse click and hold and choose to edit it with Notepad++. And so here you can see a bunch of the different parameters that can be read in. And some of these have values and some of these don't have values. So for example, length units, cutter diameter length, these are all different things that I configured. And so, like I mentioned earlier, Depending on the tool type, there are going to be different dimensions, different parameters. You can go into PTC's help in order to see the full list of parameters. It's a long list because there are a lot of different kinds of tools that you can use. But anyhow, there you can see an example of the different dimensions and parameters. So let me minimize this stuff. And I'm gonna show you a brief example of how you would set up a model in order to have these different things. Let me go to a, another window. Okay, so here I have a different tool, a different assembly. And so we've got our top level assembly and we've got a drill holder and the actual drill tool. Let me go into this particular part and create some of its requirements. And so I need a coordinate system for the tip. Let's create a coordinate system. So I will choose coordinate. Actually, let me turn on the display of some datums first because I think I'm going to need them later on for configuring the display. And so let's see, let's create our coordinate system. I will click on the coordinate system tool and let me go and zoom in and I'm gonna grab this vertex to use as the tip. And then let's go to the orientation tab. And I'm going to use the datum plane called DTM. Oops, <laughs> accidentally forgot to click in the collector first. Let me remove that and then reselect the vertex. Okay, let's go to the orientation tab and I'll click here. And I'm going to use DTM2 to determine Z. And Z needs to point up into the tool. So it's pointing in the right direction. I lucked out in that situation. And then the other thing to define the orientation, I'll use DTM1. And again, this can be X or Y. It really doesn't matter in this situation. But it will affect what how your data is output in your CL file. But in this case, I'm fine with that. 
And now let's go to the properties tab because we need to rename this. This has to be called tip. Again, if you are using a multi-tip tool, it would probably be tip one instead. I'll do a, another video on multi-tip tools because there are a bunch of other things that you need to be aware of. So anyhow, I will click the OK button. And so that's good. Let me turn off my datum plane display. And now we need to have some different dimensions in here. Let me go to the first feature and I'll hit the edit dimensions button. And there you can see two of our different dimensions. I will go to the tools tab and then let's switch dimensions. And so here is one that we need to change. And I'll pick on it. And from here in the dimension tab, I can change the name of the dimension. And again, there are a bunch of required dimensions. One thing to note is that when you are typing in the name, it is case insensitive. That's a good thing. It means that you can type it in all lowercase, all uppercase. You could do it camel case, whatever mix that you want to do. So for example, let me do this one in all uppercase, cutter underscore D-I-A-M. That's one of the required values for this kind of tool. And so that's good for that one. Let me select this dimension, the D3 dimension. Now I'll give those, this one a different name. This time I'll type in all lowercase. Let's call this one length. So these are two of the different kinds of dimensions that I need for this tool. And also we're going to need a couple of parameters in here. And, and let's just show you, let's, let's show creating the parameters at the assembly level. Let me close some of these files. Let's see, let me go to, oh, this is the file that I want. Let me go to the parameters. And again, I'm going to create them here at the assembly level. It'll read these values in first. So let me hit on the plus sign. And so one of the parameters is tool material. So let me type in tool underscore material. And then I'm going to change the type from real number to string. And let's see, let's type in for the tool material. This is going to be HSS. And let's create another parameter. And this one we don't have to fill in, but we can. And this one will be num of teeth. And even though it's called num of teeth, this would end up populating the field for the number of flutes that we have in this particular tool. And I will enter in a value of two. Let's click the OK button. And so now we have everything set up in here in order to use this as a tool. Let me go to the other window. Let's go to our cutting tools. And so if I want to use that one, I will click on the open button. Let me navigate to where I stored that. And, oh, hold on a second, we can't stop. Let me use the correct command. Let's go to file, open tool library. And so we have three different choices in here. Let me start with the bottom one, use outline. This is an option that you can use only for turning tools or turn grooving tools. And what it'll do is it will look at whatever part or assembly that you bring in. And then based on the dimensions, parameters, and geometry, it will figure out the outline of that tool in order to use. Then we have the option here to retrieve it by copy. And so like it sounds, it's going to make a copy of the information of the files in order to use in this particular CNC model. One of the advantages of using by copy is that you can actually change these different parameters later on. And then we have another option in here by reference. Well, by reference, in other words, it will bring in the different values from the model and that will be the source and what it brings in, you are not able to change. Let's go ahead and use that by reference. And so let me go to my working directory. Let me go to the folder. And here we have that one that I just added some stuff to. And so there you can see a preview of it, even with the coordinate systems displayed. And so here is how it read in the cutter diameter. Here's how it read in the length. 
of the tool. And based on the geometry and a, a, another dimension that was renamed, it read in the flute length. Here's where it brought in that number of flutes from the num of teeth parameter. And here's where it brought in the material. And again, these were defined at the assembly level. These were defined at a part level. Then we have the settings tab. And so we didn't define offset number. We could punch in a value here for that one. Then we have our cutting data. We didn't have that brought in, so we could fill in that information. Here is our bill of materials tab. And so you can see the different components that are involved here. And then there's also an offset table. And I'll bring up the offset table when I talk about multi-tip tools. But anyhow, this is good for the second tool that I want to bring in. Let me click on the OK button. And do I want to apply the changes? Yes, I do. And let me turn off my coordinate system display. So there you have it. That's how you can use a solid model as one of your cutting tools for your CNC toolpaths.